breaking news about a rail disaster involving a freight train and a truck. The collision occurred at a railway crossing. The cause of the collision is unknown. The heavy vehicle appears to have been struck by the train midway across the tracks. It seems likely that the train, unable to stop or swerve, collided with the truck as it crossed the tracks ahead of the train. The train was derailed. As this story goes to air, we still don't know the fate of the drivers of the truck or train. The financial impact of this crash is expected to be high. We'll keep you updated as more news comes to hand. Welcome to Rail Safety, I'm Carolyn Bertram. Railway level crossing safety is an issue that's often overlooked with potentially deadly consequences for motorists, pedestrians and people on trains. Disasters like the news story I just covered happen all too often. Did you know there are over a hundred crashes every year occurring around Australia involving level crossings? Like all road accidents, rail crossing casualties can be avoided if motorists and pedestrians follow basic safety instructions. Trains are the longest and heaviest land-based mode of transportation in the world. Our freight trains have about 80 wagons and weigh around 5,000 tonnes. An 80 wagon freight train is about 1,800 metres long. To you and me, that's about the size of 12 sports fields in length and the equivalent weight of around 4,000 cars. But there are trains longer and heavier than this running on railways in the northwest of Western Australia. You certainly want to stay out of a train's way. It's not surprising that when a train and vehicle collide, the consequences are devastating. Um, basically, I went down on location to um, for an installation, um, and I was reviewing some drawings. I heard a no, someone cried, no, one of the technicians, and I um, turned around to see um, the accident unfold before me. The whole experience um, was very was, was a terrible experience, and um, something that, that that I think should be avoided, and. Um, the first couple of weeks after the incident, especially, um, I think about it every day. Even a, maybe a month after the incident, I think about it every day. And particularly when I when I when I hear when I hear a train approaching a level crossing, such as that one, um, when it when it blows horn to to let let the cars know there's a train coming, or it it does um, it does remind me of the accident, and uh, it do, it does send shivers down my spine. is that we run 24 hours a day, not just, you know, there aren't just trains open four in the morning, there'll be mm. you know, four in the morning, two in the morning, there's still just as many trains as there was during the day. Yeah, well basically the, the heavy wheat trains, they make very little noise at all, they generally just roll the locos quite often out of power, and you'll be surprised if you turned away from the track, you probably couldn't hear the train coming past till it was just about next to you. If they don't make it across, we just won't stop, you know, we just, it takes sometimes two kilometres to stop, not 50 metres like a car, so. For motorists, there are several different types of rail crossing protection you need to recognise and it's important to know what you as the motorist is required to do at each of them. Remember there are heavy fines and penalties for drivers found disobeying road rules at level crossings. There is enough visibility at give way signs for drivers to be able to make a decision about whether it's safe to cross the tracks. Make sure you slow down so you can safely assess the situation and you must be able to stop safely if there's an approaching train. Always be sure there are no approaching trains before you proceed across the tracks. Remember, any time is train time. If you do see a train approaching, 
Make sure you give way to the train. It may be travelling a lot faster than you. You must stop at stop signs for your safety and that of an approaching train crew. If you're behind the wheel of a long vehicle, like a car with a trailer or a truck, then you must take extra special care. Do not proceed if there is insufficient room to allow your vehicle, including any trailer, to fully clear the crossing. And remember, when queuing at a crossing, make sure that your vehicle does not obstruct traffic on adjacent roads. Don't proceed if you can see a train coming. You might not have enough time to get across. OK, there's stop signs in um, certain places because of poor visibility and trains can come around. You won't be able to see the train coming, so you definitely have to stop in those areas. Um, maybe bridge structures and curbs or trees in the way, so that's why they have the stop signs there, so you do stop there for a reason. Flashlights flash red when there's an approaching train. There may not necessarily be good visibility of approaching trains at crossings fitted with flashlights. If you see the red lights flashing, you must stop immediately before the crossing, even if you can't see the train coming. But when the lights are on, you stop and stay there till the lights have stopped flashing. Sometimes there might be a minute wait because there's two trains, one's gone through and there's another one approaching. So just, yeah, when there's, when there's red flashing lights at a level crossing, stop and wait when the train's gone through and the lights have stopped flashing, move off. The truck driver did the right thing at that flashlight crossing. By always obeying crossing procedures, you can prevent major disasters. Not everyone does though. Whenever you approach the level crossings now, the slow and go, um, I guess, approaches, you see a lot of it. So we'll, um, you'll see a car start to slow down, you think, OK, that's OK, you've blown the whistle, and then all of a sudden they start to creep off again. So in the back of your mind, you do think they'll be doing this slow and go approach. When a train is approaching, boom gates like the one behind me descend and warning bells will ring. You must stop your vehicle and wait for the train to pass. It's only safe to drive across the tracks when the boom gate has fully risen and the lights have stopped flashing. There are different types of pedestrian crossings. We'll look at a range of situations from those where there are no specific pedestrian facilities provided through to busy crossings with automatic gates. It's common in country areas to not have any specific crossing treatment for pedestrians. That might be because there are not a lot of people or trains crossing the tracks at that particular level crossing. In these cases, it's absolutely vital that pedestrians stop at the crossing, listen and look both ways to make sure there are no approaching trains. Remember, any time is train time and awareness could save your life. At many pedestrian crossings, mazes are provided. Look out for trains in both directions and listen for approaching trains. If you can clearly see that there is no train approaching, it is safe to continue to cross the tracks. If there are boom gates at a maze crossing, it's important to follow the correct procedure. If there is a train approaching, you must stop and let the train pass. Always remember to look both ways at crossings, even if there are visible warning devices. At very busy pedestrian crossings, there are automatic locking gates which close when a train is approaching. If you have already started to cross, don't panic because there is always an escape way you can use to get off the tracks. Never climb over the fence or gate. This is against the law. Always wait until the automatic gate has opened fully before crossing the tracks. Remember, any time is train time. Pedestrians must listen and look both ways before crossing tracks. Don't cross if warning bells and flashlights are active. Motorists must always obey road rules at level crossings. Always give way to trains, they have right of way and can't stop. Please be careful at level crossings. Careless actions can be fatal. Don't endanger your life or anyone else's. By always obeying rail crossing procedures, you can stay alive and at the same time save other lives and prevent major disasters. Thanks for listening. I'm Carolyn Bertram.